Good morning. Welcome to St. Nicholas Parish Community. Today we celebrate the Epiphany. Our gathering song is hymn number 99, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, hymn number 99. Please stand and greet those around you. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with and your spirit. spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we come together, as we celebrate Epiphany, let us prepare to encounter Emmanuel, God with us, right here, right now. As we always do, let us acknowledge our need our longing for God's forgiveness and peace. You are the light of the nations, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You govern with justice and bring peace, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You protect the poor and rescue the afflicted, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people.
on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining guidance, radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Justice, the King's Son. 
He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he roll from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will shall rescue the poor when he cries out and the afflicted when he has no one to help him he shall have pity for the holy and the poor the lives of the poor he shall save Lord every nation A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that their mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, the word of the Lord. be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew glory to you O Lord when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod behold 
Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, so that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their own country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Well, wasn't it quite a week? Hmm. Different situations, perhaps different people that we might want to talk about or discuss and pr or praise or condemn. I mean, we could talk about our elected servants in the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. We could talk about that. Maybe we better not. Or maybe we could talk and read even more about our dear friends, Harry and Meghan. How about them? What do you think? Oy vey. Oh boy. Oh boy. Or perhaps we could talk a little bit about Pope Benedict. He had been our pastor, our shepherd, our teacher. Probably what most people think about Pope Benedict is that he retired. The first pope to do that in 600 years. There was a lady interviewed on TV and she said something like, she said, oh, it's just not right. The pope ain't supposed to retire. He's supposed to die. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. But we read more and more about Pope Benedict. He was a theologian, a very deep thinker. He was also controversial. controversial. He said some things that he had to uh, step back from. And it was pointed out that when he said something that he came to know was not right or the good thing to say, he apologized. He never meant to cause division or upset. One of the reporters who followed Pope Benedict, they said there was kind of this, there were two perceptions of Pope Benedict. One, that he, you know, he laid down the law. You know, he was the, they called him the Rottweiler. He got everybody into line, into uh, the right place, right? But then the reporter said he, he never met a kinder, more gentle person in his whole life. So Pope Benedict, well, he'll be remembered for many things, but primarily probably because he retired. And he created kind of, but 
think about why he retired, even in his doing that, he offered an example of humility. How many of us maybe should say, you know what, I need help. Whatever the situation might be, I can't do this on my own, or I can't do this anymore. I would love, I would love to keep doing my job, but I'm not mentally the way I used to be. I'm not as sharp, I'm not as bright. The old bones are getting creakier and creakier. And in his daring move of retiring, what an example of humility that was. That continues to be for us. Of course, his retiring, it created awkward situations, you know. Now we have, you know, people who are saying, now we have two popes, who do we listen to? Francis or Ben? And all this drama that was created. And meanwhile, most, for most of the time, he was by himself, hidden away, praying and writing. But somebody pointed out that the, even the funeral itself for Pope Benedict, it was kind of different because there was one pope presiding over the burial of another pope. It ain't supposed to be like that, said our friend on TV. But we are still here. The church still survives. <laughs> We're still following the word and the way of Jesus. There was a French bishop who commented on that situation of having two popes. But he made this observation, he said, with no conclave. Of course, we know what a conclave is. It's when after the death of a pope, the cardinals are locked into the Sistine Chapel and they elect a new successor to Peter. The French bishop said this, with no conclave to follow the funeral, and choose a new pope, the cardinals who were all there, they just go home. They've got nothing to do. I don't know if that's true. I know that's not true. Certainly, electing a pope, a great responsibility, but I'm sure that cardinals have some other things to do as well, don't you think? Today we celebrate Epiphany. We remember those mysterious visitors from the East, the three kings, or some people say they were astrologers. They come, they're following a star. They find the child with his mother, and they bow down and offer their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And they discover that the little one lying in the straw or in his mother's arms. With the eyes of faith, they look and they see this little one and they recognize him to be what we all recognize him to be, as the light, not a light, the light, not just for some peoples, not just for some nations, not just for the chosen people, not just for members of the club, not just for the insiders, but the word of God made flesh in Jesus came to be a light for all peoples and all nations. And we celebrate that manifestation, that epiphany that allows us to continue to walk by the light and the star of faith. But did you ever think about those astrologers, those three kings? We hear that, warned in a dream, they went home to their own country. Do they have anything else to do? Or was that it? Was that the end of their story? You know, when people say, hey guys, where have you been? Did they say, ah, oh, we've been around. Hmm. But what you do? Oh, nothing special. We, you know, we just followed a star and that. Could they but have helped to spread the good news of what they had experienced, of the treasure and the light that they encountered? Was their work done? Probably not, most, most probably not. Tomorrow, baptism of the Lord we will celebrate. 
And with tomorrow's feast day, the season of Christmas will come to an end. We've seen the display. We have listened to those words of scripture, ever ancient and ever new. We've encountered all the characters in the story, Mary and Joseph, and of course, the Lord Jesus, the shepherds, the wise men, the astrologers. And now Christmas is coming to an end. And if you come back here in a few hours, you'll know immediately that this holy season has come to a conclusion. But yet, sisters and brothers, because we take down the trees and turn off the lights and find new homes for our poinsettias, do we really think that's the end then? As we put the figures back in the cartons, do we put into those cartons that sense of newness and renewal a new life and new hope of a brighter light shining in our lives and therefore in our homes and in our community and even in our world is this the end because christmas is over i don't think so in fact i know so and reverend howard thurman I think he helps us look, focus on what's awaiting us now as we come to the conclusion of this holy season. He writes, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are back home, when the shepherds are back in the fields with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the brokenhearted, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to make peace among peoples, to make music in the heart. As we conclude this holy joyous, light-filled, and hope-filled season. In this season and every season, may we be a people who continue to be about the work of Christmas. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the church, may all the people of God seek the Christ child with diligence and worship him with generous hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of nations recognize the truth of the gospel 
and serve their people with justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees, victims of persecution or war, for those in Ukraine, and for all who flee places of darkness, may they find hospitality, opportunity, and light in their journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people may be guided by the light of truth as they make their own journey of faith. For all catechumens and candidates seeking membership in our church, and for those preparing to celebrate confirmation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for those who care for their needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may we welcome one and all to the home we have known in this fellowship of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they rejoice in their heavenly reward. We pray especially for David Krasuki, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Catherine Rose, Donna Wells, Suzanne Thomas, and Fidel Patron, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear the prayers of your people, a loving, faithful God. They are offered as always through Christ our Lord. Our song during the presentation of the gifts is number 105, We Three Kings, number 105. i 
pray now that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the followers of the church. Look with favor, Lord, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks now to the Lord our God. It is right, right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ. As a light for the nation. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us brand new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church scattered throughout the earth and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis our Pope, Joseph our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her beloved Joseph, with the apostles, with St. Nicholas, with Blessed Pauline, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and be safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn will be number 110, the first Noel, number 110.
Just a few things before we go. I hope, as always, you'll take the bulletin home with you, read all about it. This afternoon, right after 12.15, right about 1.30, if you'd like to come by and help us get back into ordinary time, um, all the tinsel you can gather, no charge, okay? And just kind of help us get cleaned up, so we'd be glad to have you about 1.30. Um, growing up, we lived with our grandfather in Plains, and his pastor from his former parish would come around this time of year. I think the pastor would come, the professor would come, I think he was the organist, maybe you remember this. They would come and bless the home. As we got smarter and wiser, we would say, wasn't the house already blessed, Mom? But he would come every year, huh? and uh, mark the lintels over the door, and then they could often be persuaded to have a little refreshment, if you know what I mean, okay? So um, here's an opportunity for you to ask the Lord's blessing on your home. At the beginning of a new year, there are cards and a little bit of chalk, uh, little instructions as to how you might ask the Lord's blessing in your home during the season. So there are little packets in the back and up here as well. Uh, thank you to Michael the Deacon. He and his cohorts at Bloomsburg, they put together these little packets for us in uh, English and Spanish. So um, something, even if you don't do it, it's nice to read about the tradition. Here's a little aside. Michael said they had a, he had a hard time finding chalk. I guess they don't use chalk in school anymore. We have, sister, what do we have? Smart boards and all. Sister is the principal at St. Jude's on the mountain. So they use smart boards and computer and all this stuff. So um, that's why you only got a little piece of chalk, you know, just a little, just a little piece. So I'll, I hope you'll take that home. In the bulletin, uh, a couple of inserts. Uh, about our finances and the finances of our friends up at Our Lady of Fatima. They're calling it the five-year trend analysis, okay? So I hope you'll spend a little bit and look over the, the facts and the figures. On the back of the blue sheet, it says understanding your parish financial report. After you read this, you'll probably be more confused than ever but I encourage you to take this home to see where we are in that respect, both here and at the North Campus as well, okay? Now, I, at eight o'clock mass, when we got to the fifth verse of We Three Kings, I saw a couple people rolling their eyes like, oh my, oh, oh. Well, let me tell you the story. When I was up in DuPont 100 years ago, we did verse 1, 2, 3, and 4. And did you notice how verse 4 ends? Okay. Uh, let's see. Myrrh is mine. Breathe a lot. Uh, gathering, gloom, sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stole cold tomb. Oh. So right during Mass, I, you know, the organist stopped and I said, oh, please, Mrs. Brogna, we can't let the Lord Jesus in a cold stone tomb. That fourth verse only makes sense if we do the fifth verse, when we're reminded that the one who died was also raised up and lives with us now. It would be like marking Good Friday and saying that's the end of the story, he's dead. Oh, no, no. We know better than that. So I'm glad you bore with us for that. That fifth, that fifth all-important verse of We Three Kings. So that's why we did it. And that's the rest of the story. Let us pray.
Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join in our song of sending forth number 82, Joy to the World, number 82. of his love and wonders why